Welcome back to Gem Mint Collectibles. We're here with uh, another recent reads video. I uh, just got done reading The Avengers uh, by Jonathan Hickman, uh, Omnibus Volume 1. Uh, for those of you who have been following my recent reads, I've been doing a read-through of all the Jonathan Hickman Marvel stuff. I read uh, Secret Warriors, Omnibus, the Fantastic Four volumes, uh, 1 and 2, Omnibus uh, by Hickman. And now... Avengers. Um, this collects um, Avengers 1 through 23, New Avengers 1 through 12, uh, Free Comic Book Day, Infinity number 1, Infinity 1 through 6, and then some bonus stuff at the end, which honestly I couldn't even get through. There was a Shang-Chi, Master of Kung Fu number 1, which was like a Shang-Chi and Deadpool story, and then some terrible... Uh, uh, Cannonball and Sunspot uh, uh, in the Mojo verse. I didn't even read it. I couldn't even get through that shit. Anyway, um, I didn't even realize that all of this Infinity oversized hardcover is included in this omnibus. Like every single thing in here. So if you have the new Avengers omnibus, there's no need to buy this. Uh, which, you know, my, the plan was to read Infinity after this. I didn't even realize that uh, all of it is collected in here. Every little thing. Uh, so I guess the next up for me to read is The Companion, which collects Captain Marvel 15 and 16, Thunderbolts 14 through 18, Avengers Assemble 18 through 20, Infinity The Hunt 1 through 4, Mighty Avengers 1 through 3, Nova 8 and 9, Superior Spider-Man Team Up 3 and 4, Infinity Heist 1 through 4, Fearless Defenders 10, Secret Avengers 10 and 11, Guardians of the Galaxy 8 and 9, and Wolverine and the X-Men annual one so a bunch of little tie-ins so i'll read those uh and then probably read secret wars and the secret wars companion anyway let's talk about uh avengers so this is uh from 2012 this was one of the uh initial marvel now launches which kind of starts off as um the Avengers team we know from the Avengers movie, the first movie, and the whole theme of the book is, you know, there's these huge threats coming, we need to get bigger. So it starts recruiting um, this massive team of Avengers to, uh, to uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, to face this global threat, right? So I didn't love the run. I don't know if that's um, an unpopular opinion or not. Uh, I read the first couple of issues during um, its initial release and in single issues. So when I was rereading it, I was like, oh, this shit again. So it introduces us to this character, Ex Nihilo, which is part of uh, this group of gardeners that are created by uh, uh, the oldest uh, civilization of builders and engineers. Uh, the gardeners are world makers. So they go to these planets and they determine whether or not uh they should be allowed to evolve or they'll just or they destroy them. So anyway, they um they terraform a, a section of Mars, him and his sister uh, Abyss and they create life. Uh they end up creating this character you see right here who uh ends up becoming um we're going to talk spoilers in here. I mean, this is an old run. He ends up becoming... They think his name is uh, Black Veil, but the translation was loose, was was really uh, Night Mask. But anyway, he, he ends up being like... Um, almost like the fifth element, right? Like, there's a couple of... Uh, there's, a, there's a Night Mask, there's a Star Brand, there's these um, universal weapons, right? The Star Brand story is actually pretty cool. <clears throat> So, um, where do we even start? Where do we even start with explaining what goes on here? The thing was the cosmic scale stuff. Like I was a little surprised they did another cosmic epic right after the Fantastic Four run, which was a huge epic in itself. This one has to deal a little bit off of what was introduced in the Fantastic Four run, with the theory that there's um multiple universes or an infinite number of universes, right? And something happens, like the way that the, that lady, um, is it the abyss that explains it? 
like let's say these are all the universes with all the Earths. Something happened here that shifted it and it starts fucking up all the other universes. So um, the universes uh, start going into each other and, and you have what's called an incursion. Which I'm going to try to find uh, a panel that basically Black Panther and Wakanda find the first incursion. They go through... Like a rhino comes through this portal, so they, they follow through the portal, and then they end up in this in-between of sorts of a universe where they can see the other world, the other Earth, about to crash into uh, our Earth. So then it becomes this whole thing of what are we willing to do in order to save our universe? Are we willing to destroy that other Earth, whether or not there's people there or not? You know, and, and it has the whole thing with the Illuminati. So for those who don't know, the Illuminati is made up of Namor, Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Black Panther, Captain America, Black Bolt, and Mr. Fantastic. And they all wield uh, or keep safe an Infinity Stone. So it's kind of, there's a kind of a cool scene in the beginning. Oh, here's a good explanation of what I was talking about with those, like, universes. So she breaks it down and shows how... Um, how something happening to one... This is really interesting. So the more universes there are, the further away uh, they are from everything dies. That's a whole another big theme of this book, is everything dies, every universe ends up dying. So the more universes there are, the longer it takes to reach the creation to the end. But as the universes uh, become less, then that straight line becomes shorter and the end of everything comes faster. Does that make sense? I think I explained it better than I fucking thought I was going to, to be honest. Anyway, a dope scene where the Illuminati decides, um, hey, let's let's put the stones together for the gauntlet. Who's going to wield it? Captain America's going to wield it. He tries to push the Earth back, shatters all the Infinity Stones. Uh, Thanos is pretty pissed later on when he finds out about that. But um, I love how they deal with Black Bolt, how they don't let him talk at all. And then when he finally talks, it's always so epic, you know? Even in this one, when he finally says something really, really low, right here, and you can see they even make the words really low, it shakes the room and cracks the table. They always do Black Bolt pretty good in his stories in that sense when they um when they finally let him unleash that shit because he holds back all the time, right? He never talks, but because when he talks, his his voice is so powerful. They talk about Hyperion, which is a fake ass Superman. I can't really get around a Hyperion. Instead of leaving a planet that explodes like um, Superman, they do have a pretty cool uh, explanation of how um, AIM uh, reaches out and grabs him from this dying universe uh, through this uh, portal. And he's the last per last uh, remnants of a, of, a dying, of a dead universe. That's a pretty cool story. <clears throat> so all the Avengers and the new Avengers stuff deal with the incursions. And how they're going to prevent them um, without letting anybody know and <clears throat> shit like that. All right, what else? So, yeah, the team of uh, Avengers. So, they have these, like, in the beginning of every issue. At first, it starts off with, like, your basic uh, six. And then it expands. And then it tells you the names in blue on who's going to be in this issue. But you have your your you know your core team of Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Hawkeye, Black Widow, Hulk. Then you have Wolverine, Spider Man, Captain Marvel, and Spider Woman, Falcon, Shang Chi, Sunspot, and Cannibal from New Mutants, Manifold, who's the teleporter, Smasher, who I really like her little bit of story in here. She's a super guardian for the uh, Shi'ar Empire, Captain Universe, and Hyperion. Um. Yeah, when, when I was reading the Avengers stuff, I really felt, you know, there's no character development. And I guess it's really hard when you have such a big team. And, you know, Hickman just assumes you already know all these characters. But, I don't know. It's, um, I didn't really like the, the beginning of it. I mean, when you start getting into Infinity, I guess I do like it a little bit better. But even so, it was just... All these cosmic epics are, you know, can be very similar, and uh, I don't think it was better than Fantastic Four, so, like, that, you know, 
take that as you would, you know? So what else is worth mentioning here? Here's some cool artwork, Thor. I like Thor in this run. They treat Thor pretty good, especially um, when, when they fake their surrender to um, one of the builders later on. Uh, and they tell him, you know, you can't bring your weapons. So he's like, he, he, he says something to Molnir, throws the shit out of the atmosphere, but it really just circles around the sun and comes back and phew, goes right through the, um, the builder. And that's like the first time that everyone can see that you can kill a builder. So what else is worth noting here? Yeah, I don't think that they ever really figure out how to stop the incursions at the end of this. Um, during the last one, there's what seems to be good builders and alephs, I think they're called, which are basically like the muscle for the gardeners. And they save, they, they destroy the earth that's about to crash into us. Um... So Abyss always taunts the Avengers like, you guys really haven't figured out shit. Every time you got saved, it was really because somebody else saved you. But they try to make it seem like, yeah, they're going to go destroy every Earth. Because the reason why um, everything happens around Earth is that, for whatever reason, Earth is the axis of everything that's going to be uh, death in the universe. So those builders say they're going to go destroy every Earth on every universe, and that should help slow down the process. Here's a dope Thanos panel. I think that was really the inspiration um, for this Thanos on throne portrait, actually. Damn, I can't really grab it. Damn. I think it was a really big inspiration for that. <clears throat> so, pretty cool uh, stuff with Inhumans and Black Bolt. Thanos fights Black Bolt on Attilan, and uh, Black Bolt. Um, he, you know, he uses his voice, he destroys all of Attilan, and these Terrigen bombs go off, and everybody basically on Earth who's uh, inhuman is exposed to the Terrigen mist, so that sets up that there's going to be a shitload of new inhumans. So the thing about Infinity, I liked reading Infinity because that's where we get introduced into the Black Order, which is funny because they say in the book that really it's supposed to be the Midnight Slaughter. But they're like, Thanos let us call it the Black Order. It's a little less imposing. Anyway, you get introduced into the Black Order. Do I have, uh, let me see if I have the names, because I'm not going to remember them all. I know it's uh, Super Giant, Ebony Maw. What are the other names? I can't think of it. Let me see. Let's see if I can find the list of the names. I know they have those two. We'll see. Anyway, the Black Order is going to be in the Infinity War movie. So, you know, they might borrow a lot of what happened in Infinity for that movie. I think they're going to combine Infinity with Infinity Gauntlet to, to, get, um, to get what's going to happen in the Infinity War movie. Here's Infinity. You see if they show the names of the Black Order, because I don't remember the rest. Ebony Maw, Supergiant... Let me see, hold on. So anyway, while well, I'm looking for that, so Thanos, you know, he finds out that the stones are destroyed, so he wants to find, there was one stone that wasn't destroyed, it just vanished. I forget which stone that was. I think it was the time stone. So I'm thinking, okay, he's going to try to find the time stone in order to, um, in order to get the other stones back. But he's really he's trying to find the time stone and he's really trying to find his his last offspring, his son Thane. So what's dope about Thane is that Thane um is Thanos' son with an inhuman. So Thane gets uh he's a healer, he looks like a regular human, but when he gets exposed to the Terrigen Mist, 
he turns into something that looks like Thanos and his powers are death. His left hand will kill you and his right hand will uh, put you in a living death. And they, that's basically how Thanos is captured at the end of the, the story. He's like basically boxed in this cube of living death. So the Thane shit was pretty cool. I don't know if they're going to do Thane in, um, in the movie. I don't think they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna use that aspect of it. Hold on a second, it's pissing me off. I can't think of the name. Oh, here we go. Corvus Glaive, Super Giant, Ebony Maw, Black Dwarf, Proxima Midnight. That's what I couldn't remember. So yeah, I mean, I guess that's it. Um, you don't have to have you read, you know, Fantastic Four to get this. But it's cool to know, you know, have read Annihilation, War of Kings, Fantastic Four, because they talk about the Annihilation Wave. Annihilus, you know, ends up teaming up with um, the Galactic Council to, to face these builders. The Galactic Council is made up of Scrolls, Kree, uh, Shi'ar, you know, the Avengers. Um, I forget the name of this guy, the Super Intelligence of the Kree. And it's funny because... He was basically remade out of two Reed Richards uh, from the Fantastic Four run. So that's just, you know, cool stuff to have known going into it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was another big event that, you know, that was so huge in scale. And you kind of know that there's no consequences, I, I feel like. So I don't know, maybe that's why I didn't really like it as much. I think I need to read some street level stuff right about now. <laughs> um, this is cool when the gardeners find the rest of their gardeners. They end up finding out that R. X. Nihilo and his sister is the only one that, when they're born, there's light and dark. He's light, she's dark. They're the only ones that are still out there creating. All these other ones, the builders have basically like neutered them. Uh, it's only the um, the yellow guys left, and they haven't been creating anything and. <clears throat> they basically band together to, uh, you know, to help destroy the builders. Here goes Thane, son of Thanos, uh, being exposed to the Terrigen Mist and becoming uh, a purple, a purple dude like his father. So I guess that's pretty much it for uh, Avengers by Jonathan Hickman. It's called Volume 1. I'm not sure what's going on in Volume 2, if there's going to be a Volume 2. I don't know if I really left anything out, but I guess that's just the gist of it. Here's the end, if you want a spoiler. Thanos getting trapped up by Thane. Yeah, Thanos, his whole thing is he wants to kill his offspring. It's It just sickens him to know that they're out there and existing, is like exactly what he said. So, uh, that's it for um, the Avengers recent read. I don't know if I'm going to jump into this companion, because the companion is going to have tie-ins that are going on while this story was happening. So it's going to be kind of like filling in some blanks and stuff. You know, looking at stuff from like a Nova point of view or whatever. Um, so if I don't jump into this right now, what else did I want to read? I know I wanted to go into that Akira box set. I promised myself I'd read that. Jack Kirby's Fourth World, I'm kind of interested in jumping into that. I know that's going to be a big undertaking. Uh, you guys uh, give me a recommend. Uh, you know, give me a recommendation. Um, anything in the collected edition back there? Anything in the Gemmin Library videos? If you saw that you'd like to see a recent reads on, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just gonna pick something that I want to read. All right, man. So we're gonna wrap it up. Thanks for checking it out. We are doing the live show tonight at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern, with Milton the Manimal. We're gonna be doing the history of the X Men Part One. Going to be drinking beers and talking comics. Make sure to join for the live chat. Uh, make sure to follow Gem Mint Collectibles on Facebook so you can get updates on when we're going to be having live shows. And uh, subscribe to this channel too, man. Thanks for all the support. We're growing. Uh, we're going to continue to do that. A lot of big stuff coming up. So thanks uh, for checking me out. Stay minty fresh. Peace.